testing. <clears throat> okay, welcome, 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 everyone. <laughs> well, I'm glad we are back together again. Hello. Just checking in the chat here to make sure you can hear me. Someone give me a thumbs up or a Heidi Ho. <laughs> yeah, sorry about last night. Like I said, I my Apple Pencil ran out of uh, power and uh, I tried to draw traditionally and then I couldn't get my uh, camera to uh, to show you uh, straight up so it was uh, upside down <laughs> okay let's see now all right Danielle you can hear me excellent me too <laughs> all right well let's uh, yes I can hear excellent okay well let's get started here um, as you can see I'm ready to go I hope you're ready too I'm using um, um, I'm using an Apple Pencil and my iPad and the program Procreate, but it's really no difference uh, than using a uh, paper and a pencil or a paper and a marker. <laughs> yes, it does happen. So, but we're all together. <laughs> That's what's most important. So anyhow. So anyways, so let's go ahead and get started. And I want to... Um, just kind of walk you through how I would approach usually how I approach a uh, a drawing or any subject matter um, I usually go through three quick phases um, I will start off with my gesture and then I'll go into like construction or volume And then I'll go into detail. And I found over the years, um, this is the way I really like to do it. Um, the gesture is loose. It's uh, relaxing. Sometimes a gesture can be, uh, I like to describe it as if your pencil is gliding quietly on a on ice like an ice skater and you're just trying to get a feel for what you're drawing in front of you uh, and of course the gesture is going to be the under drawing and you want to make sure you draw that lightly uh, and then on top of that then you start making some adjustment adjustments you start adding um, cubes and spheres and volumes and then that gets a little bit darker as well and then finally, when you get that down, then you're going to come back in with your detail on top. So that's pretty much the same approach that we're going to take tonight. And one of the uh, hardest things or one of the uh, a very strong skill to get is to just learning how to hold your pencil lightly and then build your drawing up from there. OK, so let's uh, let's kind of get started with this one here. So, as I'm looking at my drawing here, uh, this is how I would approach it, all right? So you can see if I was gonna draw this on a sketch, on a, uh, on a uh, sketchbook, I would usually start off with some type of framework. I, I know a lot of people like to draw to the edge of their sketchbook, but um, I like to, uh, if I'm going to do a picture or a scene, I like to give myself some type of border. Anyway, so uh, that's what I've done here. I'm trying to get myself a border. And then as I look, um, this is going to be a gesture. So all I'm going to do here, as light as possible, just to quickly get an idea. I'm not, it's like a scribble here. Just trying to get some idea where things will go. And as you can see, it's it goes quick. Uh, 
okay I'm gonna leave that up while while I leave that and you can see kind of what I've done there I'm gonna grab a sketchbook I want to show you Okay, so this is a good example. So, so as you can see, here is um, a sample page from one of my sketchbooks. And when I get to this page over here, let me find it here. I try and, yeah. So here's, here is a, uh, a neighborhood scene and you can see that I've just squared it up, but then right next to it was this quick study of this lady here. All right. Here was here was a, a fun series of some small heads that I did, but as you could see on some pages, I give a lot of breathing room to whatever I'm drawing or sketching. And then sometimes, sometimes I'll go hog wild and I'll just fill, fill an entire page up. All right. Oh. All right. Russell's in the house. Excellent. So as you can see, uh, when I'm sketching in a sketchbook, I'm trying to, uh, uh, if it's a landscape, I like to try and contain it. A little bit I don't always draw to the edge I like to give a little bit of breathing room so anyhow so you could kind of see in front of you right now a this would be a quick gesture it gives me a little bit of an idea of where things are going all right next thing you do next thing I'm going to do is start thinking of construction and volume so as I look at my picture here let's of course that um, that covered bridge is is key so what I'm going to do and just I'm going to show you a, a very easy way to draw a building and I'm going to go to a new um, a new layer we'll come back to that drawing in a second I just want to show you show this to you on separately all by itself so if I was going to draw this covered bridge first thing I'm going to look for is the verticals so let's just say there's one vertical and there is the second vertical now I'm looking at I am looking at let me uh, change this really quick here I'm kind of looking at the distance between here and here and that's what I'm trying to what that's what I'm trying to create right in there okay Next thing I want to do is I'm going to draw this other, I'm going to just guesstimate that's going to go right about there. Okay. Now that's going to be, those are the easiest ones for me to, uh, to capture there. <clears throat> From here now, I want to look at my next angle. All right. Next angle is going to, I'm going to try and draw this and I'm going to try and draw this. And it, it doesn't have to be exact, all right? It just has to be close. So on this, I'm going to do this. And this is going to have a slight angle as well. Next thing, and if, if I'm going too fast, just Ask me to slow down and I will uh, stop for a minute and let you get caught up, okay? <clears throat> Next thing I want to do is look for this angle. Now, all I'm doing actually, and this angle, all I'm doing really is drawing a box. 
so this one we're going to come down and this one we're going to come down So whenever you're drawing, so let's, if you're, whatever you're drawing a house, these are the little things that you, you may want to look for. So let's do this. I have one, I want to add a picture here. So let's see, add a, insert a photo. And let's just take this one right there. Boom. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at this one here. Same technique I'm going to use. And this guy, I'm going to, let's see here, move him up. All right. Same technique. So I'm going to, I'm going to draw the, uh, I'm going to draw this house, the basics of what we're doing right now. So same thing, draw a line. I'm going to draw this other line. And then I can see that this house continues because it has this little, it has this little um, shack on the end. And then the last little part right there where that door is, you see that? Same thing. Now I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at this picture here. We're going to come back to our, our, uh, We'll come back to our uh, our uh, covered wagon in just a second. I mean, our uh, bridge in just a second. Okay. So now, so with this this house, I could see that this angle is coming up. I just and I put that green line to give me an idea what's what's perfectly parallel, and this other. This other one is coming down like this. This is, this here is gonna be the roof line. And I could, I could see that the roof line, that this roof line is just a little bit below that. So I'm just gonna continue in that same angle, just like that. I'm looking at the, now I'm looking at the bottom of this right there and you can see that this comes up. And I'm looking at the top right there and you can see that this comes down. And then I'm gonna look right here and I can see that this also comes down. Now, if I want to get the peak here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the back corner here, and this actually will be much easier when we draw our covered bridge because it's not covered up. I'm going to make an X. I'm going to connect the uh, two corners. Am I going too fast? Too fast? From where those cross, then I'm going to draw a guideline almost straight up. And this, this little distance right in here 
is going to be this distance. Let me erase some of this. This distance here is going to be this distance right in there. And I'm not using a ruler. I'm just guesstimating. I'm using using my eyes, okay? I'm going to follow this angle right here. Well, actually, no, it's going to come down just a little bit more because it's going in perspective. Keep my eye on this angle back here. And I want to match that. Or come close to it. All right. You're watching Russell. Excellent. You could rework that. You could come back and look at this tomorrow if you want. So when you're drawing buildings, traditional buildings, you don't need to know all of the. Um, you don't need to know all of the uh, vanishing points or anything like that. You just need to know the perspective and a sense of your your house that you're building. And this is a sure way to really help speed things up so you don't have to know all the mechanics of perspective, okay? All right, let's get our other roof in, other side of our roof there. And now our other one falls into place, just like that. And if you wanted to get the roof line of the other house, same thing. You would just put an X right there. Go straight up. And it goes straight back. And once again, look for this angle right there. And then get the other side, right? Just like that. Boom. <clears throat> now, is this is this building absolutely perfect? No, but no one's going to see it. They're just going to see the. They're just going to see my drawing. Okay, unless you post in the Facebook group, and I asked you to. <laughs> I say, show me your reference, but generally, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna come back just to just hang in here. This is good practice. All right, let's erase some of this out of the way here. All right. Now look at let me show you this now. Look at look at these slats in this house here. You could see them kind of going this way, and then they start to do this, and they start to do this. All right, so if we're gonna add now, the construction phase basically is over, we can start getting into detail. So if I'm looking at my house here, here's, here's a little trick for you. If you have a straight line, it's very easy to break this line up into equal segments. You simply just find this, you just kind of visually determine where the middle point is then you break that up and you break that up and you could keep evenly breaking this line down into equal same segments just by finding the uh, the middle point. Our house here is no difference. OK, so I'm going to find I'm going to establish the middle point right here. And then I'm going to establish the middle point right there. And now I'm just going to connect the dots. I'm going to do that again right there. And I'm going to connect the dots. Same thing down here. So what's happening is just by just by working through this dividing things down, we actually are creating these slats that are um, in perspective. 
Now, if I want to try and determine where the center point of the side of this building is, again, and I, I want to draw lightly here, I'm going to draw an X and an X there, or a straight line, and that's the center. That's the center of this house in perspective. Now, why do I want to do that? It's going to help me determine where these windows are. So detail then, I can drop this window in here. And then there's another, another window. And I'm just going to guess, I'm estimating where this, this, this window is here. And now I'm just starting to work in just a little, a little detail. And you can see where I could go with this just by adding more detail and more detail and more detail. All right. What do you say we get back to our covered, covered bridge now, huh? All right, uh, where am I? Okay, that was our little test, if I remember right. So we're good there. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into our uh, back into our drawing here. So now that you kind of got a feel for that, um, on my quick sketch here, on my gesture, let's go ahead and let me just make sure. Yep, and I'm going to put this back end. Um, of where my covered bridge is going. And then the same thing, I'm going to now just kind of guess here where the front end is going. And then I could put in my other end over here. All right, I'm gonna move forward here. Now, again, I'm gonna try and draw lightly because I'm not, uh, I don't want to be totally committed to this quite yet, all right? So I've connected those and I'm gonna look at this angle and this guy, I can't, I can't see it because it's behind the snow there. But that will give me a uh, a good idea with that house. Let's find the uh, let's find the point here. Let's find this this up there. Okay. So same thing. Let's put an X right here. I'm going to draw a line up. I can even connect this like this. Or 
bring it down. Now remember, now I'm kind of, what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking for this angle there. And there you go. I've got my covered bridge there. That was probably the, the hardest thing the hardest thing to do on this whole drawing is get that get that aspect right there so all right let's let's talk about something else now and I'm going to just bring a new uh, let's see here I'm going to take that away and we're gonna clear that okay Let's talk about this this concept idea of of overlap and layering, all right? And this is going to come into play with what we're going to draw here. So, this idea, um, let's just say if you had a rock, all right, and we wanted to show depth, we're going to use um, layering or we're going to use overlap. So if I have a rock like this, and and you might think of, oh my gosh, that is so stupid because it's so simple but yet you would be amazed of such a simple concept how often we don't even like aren't even aware that we're doing it or we should do it all right and then I'm going to put another one behind here so using using this idea I am um, telling our minds that of course this is the most forward this is behind and this is behind that, okay? If when you start doing figure drawing, you'll use this concept quite a bit, actually. Um, for example, if I was to uh, draw this form, this could be the back of a knee. And this is the top, this would be the top leg, and this would be the calf. And by coming in here and making this mark right in here, I'm saying that this, this is in front of that. And we call that, we call this T, T's, because it looks like the letter T here. Or in some cases, it will look like a letter Y. So in our, in our drawing down here, you could see that here's, this is like an upside down T. This could be a backwards Y. Here's another one. So when we're drawing, and you will see this a lot in animation drawings, and you really want to be aware of that, in that uh, they will use the T's and Y's to create layering or depth. Okay? I gotta say, I gotta stop saying okay all the time. We'll, we'll get, over time, we'll get better at these, and you guys are going to be my guinea pigs. <laughs> All right, back to my house here. All right. So let's look at, let's look at, our, let's look at this concept of layering. So immediately what I see is, look at this, um, look at this shape in here look at this this bank okay all right so what we have here is we have this layer here we have this layer here and then we we almost have a layer back here and a layer here so this these are the things that are going on in my mind when i see this all right All right, so what I'm going to do is then I'm going to come in here and think of the layer. All right, I'm going to do another one right here. And then this bank is coming in here. And what I'm doing now is not only on my drawing, but I'm also checking the shapes. Oh, does this shape match that shape? Yes. Is this shape here the same proportion as this shape down here. You see that?
Russell, did you fall asleep? <clears throat> did I put you to sleep? <laughs> I know it's late. You are a trooper to be up this late trying to do this. So hats off to you, my friend. <laughs> All right, let's carry on here. All right, so uh, let's continue down some of the banks here. Now, look at this. This this is the shape that comes right over there. And then I have another shape that comes down. And you can see that it's slowly making its way into the water there. And then uh, what else I got? I got, I got a big old rock here. Actually... If I look closely, this now I'm, I'm looking at this here. I'm looking at this distance here. So where I put this rock, I want to be mindful that proportionally I'm uh, close to that over there. All right. So if I'm going to be here and these are going to be there. All right. Got that. And then I'm going to put this this bulb piece in here. You can see some of that layering going on. Daniel, you still with me? Doing okay? Bit tired, just about, just about with you. <laughs> good, good. All right. Then we also get this great rock in the bottom. Of in the bottom right here and let's come up here and uh, look at the bank now again I'm looking at I am looking at like I'm looking at this shape and I use I use the word shape and volume they're totally two different things so I'm very careful excellent Daniel is still with us. Uh, so I, I use those two words very carefully, and that's, they mean completely two different things, but I use them to measure things, to keep my proportion straight on. So sometimes I'll use shape. Oh, does this shape match? Uh, match what I'm trying to draw right now, all right? So uh, coming up here, I can see that, let me erase this. coming across all right and now I'm going to draw some boulders here or, or some things that have gotten covered with snow all right uh, do you ever draw in the vanishing point guidelines N I don't I don't because um, because usually that, because the the vanishing points, mm, the vanishing points are so far away. So, for example, if the vanishing point on this would be like way way off my page, this this one isn't too bad. But when I'm doing perspective on my buildings, I'm actually kind of using a grid. Let me. That, that is a great question. So, I'm just gonna pause for a minute and. Uh, show you how that works and I even want to get I don't want this to say so this is how it works Russell a lot of times if you just do this sort of thing right here this here is almost like a I'm fan I'm fanning out my lines. These are these are going to be my guides to end up drawing um, a house however I want. We had someone in the Facebook group mention something about not liking perspective and I thought, well, there's ways there's ways to do it where it's not it's not as mechanical. And so all I've done really quickly is create this um, grid. Okay. Now what is it? Is this a house? It might be. What if, 
What if it's not? What if it's a... Um, what if it's a, it's a building in a city? What if what if this is a street coming down here? And then this And I'm just I'm just guessing I'm just estimating here. And of course this would this would also be like uh an underdrawing. So I'm just quickly working out my perspective like this. And then what if what if I had a building that was really close to us here? You know, maybe maybe another one is coming over here. And so this this might be all in like a a shadow of some sort. And this can come up here. You see, does that make sense in a way? So you could come back into this. You could come back into this and do all the mechanics that you're suggesting or wondering. Or you can, you know, uh, just get really good at eyeballing it. You know, if I had to put a line, if I had to put a line of windows here, I would once again... Uh, make these X's because this is where you've got to put the X's in. The X's will tell you how to break this thing up and have it go in perspective. You see that? So you're creating the perspective lines. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely because then you can because then you're not in my early in my early days what I found out is when I did my perspective first um, it really locked me into it where if I could instead um, be let's see clear this if if I could do this instead watch okay let's see I'm, I want to have a building here and I want to have a smaller building here and um, I'm going to put a bridge. I'm going to put a bridge in the background here. You see this? And it's like, okay, now let me work out the perspective here on how this. Okay, it's going to be up there. This is going to be down here. Okay, I got that. There's going to be the eye line right there. Okay, so now, now I've got that building like this. Oh. Uh, what am I doing here? Boom. There it is. So you you can see that by uh, and that's a new one for me. Excellent. So you can see that as you start to do your gesture and lay in. Oh, I want a building here, or I want this here. You build your um, perspective around the object versus putting in the perspective and then trying to build your object within that. So that is. Uh, that's the way I roll, my friend. <laughs> yeah, the X, the X will, that's the way to show you the center of, uh, of a, um, clear. That will show you the center, like this, of, of something. So, for example, let's just say, and I'll, I'll prove it to you. Or not, I don't have to prove it to you, but I'm going to show it to you in a very simple way. Let's say this is your your desert landscape. And you're going to have a, a row of fences. Okay? That are going to go back. And just for the conversation, that's your vanishing point. Okay? So let's just say we have a, uh, a fence there. And then we're going to have a fence way down, way down over there. And we want to have fences going, posts going back in perspective, okay? So I do not, because this line is going back in space, I don't want, I don't want to estimate the middle here. That's not going to be correct. The middle point in perspective is going to, oop, look at that. It's going to be somewhere 
Wow, look at that. That's the middle point in perspective. Let's do that. Let's find the middle point of these two guys here. That's the perspective. Of course, if these were all guides, if these were uh, an underdrawing, it would, it would, it, I would draw this much more lightly. But for our demonstration purposes, you could see that, in a way, all of these, all of these posts start to go back, go back in space. Now that would, if I was drawing that, like looking straight on, I wouldn't need to do that. I could just. Just use my mind and do that subdividing. But when something is going back in perspective, you got to do the X. That will that will uh, reverse engineering. Hmm, might try that. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I try and make perspective fun. Boy, did I have a construct uh, perspective? Can really be it can be very mechanical after a while. Okay. How are we doing with time? Oh, 15 minutes. We're doing, no, uh, what time is it? 7.40. Okay, 7.40. We're going to get back to our drawing now. Danielle is saying like, come on, get on with it. Let's finish this thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. So back to our, our house here. Our, not our house, our covered bridge. All right. So... At this point, I'm just going to start continue adding. I'm looking at shape. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm looking at shape and I'm starting to add. Um, I don't need to measure anymore. I don't need to make these little squares or anything like that. I can just start to rough in where these pieces are going. I can start adding a little bit of uh, shadow and, and form. And someone had mentioned today about using a ruler. You can, but I, I think, I really think a, a ruler will just slow the slow the oops slow the process down and when you practice drawing just with your free hand without using a ruler it it just keeps it keeps things looking natural it's very sketchy and that's 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 what I like I like sketchy I like things to be a little more sketchy so on this on the roof here the snow on the roof here on the snow, I've kind of given it some dimension by using surface lines. Let's get this tree in the back here and, and oh, I'm just gonna use a shape right now, okay? Just, there's another one over there. And I can squint my eyes a little bit and start to add in the uh, a little bit of tone here. I'm not really interested in uh, in getting every leaf. I just want to look at value now. Just value. All right, we've got this 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 guy is coming up there in the back. Looks like he's lost half his half of his branches. And then we got this guy coming in over here. I could see under oops I could see underneath my uh, 
building here. Now at this point, I'm gonna I'm already I've started to add some type of a little bit of value to it. So on my end, what I'm doing is I'm squinting, squinting my eyes, and I'm starting to ask myself, okay, where are the um, where are the darker starks, where are the lightest lights? And as I'm filling filling in tone, I'm drawing to the direction of the surface. So as you can see, as I'm drawing in the, the tone that's going to go into the stream, I'm gonna draw that in horizontally. When I draw, draw in the tone for this bridge underneath, I'm gonna draw that in vertically. Again, now I'm going to squint my eyes, and I and this this underneath here is going to be a lot darker value than than my bridge up on top, and so is this surface down here. Still squinting, trying to just hit those values. This is really dark in here too. And it's going to have a nice dark value underneath here. And this, this whole bridge has a darker value than the, the red has a darker value than the snow up on top. So I want to add an overall tone to this. And then I could see that the, uh, this corner here of my bridge is darker than than the front end there and I want to I want to respect that and then I've got this great shadow coming in here so let's drop that in a little bit and this is going to be around here like this okay Now, I'm going to come back in now and, uh, oh, look at that right there. This, this has a little bit of a shadow over there. And then this is, this inside part is really dark. And this turns the corner over here. Now, in, in objects that are closer to me, objects that are closer to me, I'm going to, me personally, I'm going to add a little bit of a thicker, thicker line, and this is going to give a sense that, that, the, that they're closer to me. The edge of the bank here has some surface lines. Remember, surface lines are like if you, if you had a... Uh, Let's say a, a uh, can or, or a cylinder. These are surface lines, lines that follow the surface. Okay, and you don't want to make them too even, but this will help us help the viewer uh, feel the volume. Look at look at underneath here. I noticed that there is there is a shadow of these objects, of these snow covered in the snow. As I squint my eyes once again, I can see there's tone in this, in the water, at different places. Let's see what's going on here. We've got this. And how much darker? This is this is much darker down here. 
I want to get some separation of tone between the uh, this covered bridge and then I've got more trees coming up back over here and some trees over here as well now there is one tr I didn't I left off this this uh, tree in front here we don't have those type of covered bridges so support section is a bit of a mystery yeah we have in Pennsylvania I, I used to live in California and we have uh, there's a lot of covered bridges around here that are a lot of fun and I, I didn't take this picture but it just it just with the uh, snow coming down it remind me Russell did you guys get snow let's see where in you're in you're in England right someplace Someday if you come out here to Pennsylvania, I'll, I'll show you a couple of them, all right? <laughs> that's, a, that's an open invitation to come pay me a visit. How about that? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop my, uh, I'm gonna drop my, uh, brand, my tree in here now. You don't have to do this, but I think it, uh, it does add some interest here. And I'm going to come back in with uh, some some of these sticks that, uh, yep, England, London, excellent. All right. We're going to have to come visit each other. That would be a lot of fun. All right, thanks. It looks like you are heading off to bed here. So we will see you later, my friend. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right, Danielle, how are you doing? Doing okay over there? Look at look at this snowbank on the far side of the. Uh, we're gonna finish up here. We're getting close. This the snowbank on the far side. You can almost see these surface lines. It it. It drops straight into the uh, into the water there. Oh, not yet. Okay, I thought you were. I thought you were signing off with your thanks. <laughs> Good, you're doing great. Excellent. Okay. So we've got some of these. I can see we've got some twigs in the foreground that are coming off this tree here. We even got one there. I think we're done. I might go and just add a little extra tone in here, but but that is how I would approach this covered bridge. Any uh, any questions and you could you could you know as I'm now as I'm looking at these two together you could see I'm I'm not a hundred percent exact I mean my my building ended up being a little bit narrow than the reference but that's okay it's it's in perspective it uh, it has a good uh, it, it looks consistent So uh, yeah, post your if I'll I'll post this in the um, Facebook group tonight, and uh, please.
please post your drawings as well. I'd love to see them tomorrow, and I, I hope you guys uh, enjoy that. Any last, let's see, uh, Russell, you're done. You're going to drop the mic and go to bed. My tree kind of got lost in the door. Totally okay. Um, you can, uh, you know, Daniel, I don't know if, what you're using to draw with, but but if you have, if you're using um, Crayola or a white pencil, let me show you this. You could do something like this. Let's just say uh, I'm going to go with white. You know, you could, you could, you could do something. I'm going to put this on another layer here. You could do something like this. Give it a light side there. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Then leave it. So we'll just pretend like I never showed you that little highlight trick right there. <laughs> okay you guys that's it for tonight thank you so much for watching and uh we will see you tomorrow i i still plan to do the uh live uh face drawing tomorrow so we'll we'll get that done and i think there's a couple uh photos of dogs that i've been meaning to uh do one of these live sessions with as well so maybe we can pick one of those up and i will definitely post that in uh, the facebook group but that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed myself. I hope you guys did too. <laughs> okay. See you later. Good night, everyone. Thanks.